Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to make a really cool functionality in our CLI, which is uh, you define a file with a, a list of libraries and softwares and the CLI is going to automatically install all of those for you. And this is amazing. I have been using that for many years uh, lately. And, and like, Rafael, why, why do you need that? And how many times do you need to install your softwares? Well, not very often, but when I do, that's an amazing so uh, feature. Recently, my, my work laptop had some issues and I had to take to uh, the IT to, uh, for support and they gave me a temporary laptop. So I had to, f I had to set up that temporary laptop. A couple of weeks later, they gave me back my old laptop and then I, but they had to reinstall the, the, uh, the OS. So I had to reset up uh, the, the computer from scratch again. So that uh, having those fun that functionality made my life so much easier. I also use on my personal CLI called R2D2 uh, for, my personal, uh, for my personal laptop because sometimes I, my personal computer, sometimes I, when I have a new operating system to install, I don't always like to update it. I like to re reinstall from, from, from scratch and having that available, uh, that options of being able to reinstall everything automatically saves me a bunch of my time. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so hit the bell to receive notifications of my next videos. And I'm going to post the links from all my previous ones so you can keep it up and let's start, right? So. Let me clear here. So what we have here, we have our CLI, but the first thing that we are going to do The first thing that we are going to do, we are going to uh, be able to we are going to do some refactoring. I, I don't like the QA ops name. I was taking a look at this. The QA ops name feels weird. Uh, the CLI is already for the QA Ops uh, channel. So why I have a menu QA Ops? And also the URL also feels weird. This came with the framework uh, when we installed and it's the same as the QA Ops, right? Uh, functionality. So we don't need this. Uh, so we are going to delete the URL. So we're going to delete this functionality. And we are also going to delete the conf URL. We don't need this either. And we're going to refactor the QA ops uh, menu and we're going to show the subcommand and we're going to uh, call it these repos because these are the repos of my uh, the, of the QA ops channel. So I'm going to uh, either right click it and choose refactor rename or shift F6. And I'm going to call these repos, right? I also need to change the conf here, right? Because uh, the way the framework works is I need this to be the same. Uh, I need the folder inside conf to be the same as the, the same name as the sub command, because when I do load conf repos, this is going to look, the repos is going to look for a repos file and the load conf itself is going to look for uh, a folder that is the same as the sub command that's being used from. So these I need to refactor to repos. Right? And this cannot be repos and repos, right? Uh, it doesn't even make sense, but I can call it repos list. So this is list and I'm going to refactor this and it's asking me if I want to refactor a bunch of stuff. I'm going to allow it. And now you can see that it refactored to list, refactor this to list, this to list. It's fine. This, I don't like it. List all repos and the rest, everything was list. So now we are good. The last thing that I need to do is change this from repos to list. All right. So now when I do BB, I have repos and here I have all my projects. Let's see if we broke something. We have docs It's going to open docs. We have download docs 
and it's going to download it. It already exists. It has download everything and it's going to try to download everything. Everything already exists. Great. So that's, that's it for the refactoring, right? So now we need to create the functionality that we, we want, right? So the first thing is I'm going to create a menu and I'm going to copy here just because this is a lot of typing and I'm lazy. So, right. So what I'm doing here is install either libs or softwares and then install with the libraries of software necessary for working with all QA, QA ops projects. Libs will install all libraries and softwares will install all softwares. So you might ask, Rafael, why are you uh, installing uh, little by little? Why not like one command that's going to install everything? So those are very two different things. One are libraries like Gradle, Python, Java, and the software is uh, like an IntelliJ or a terminal or a Dbeaver or uh, PyCharm or whatever software you use, right? VS Code. So I rather keep those separate because it makes more sense. Like uh, I might already have some the software installed, but not the libraries and vice versa. And you can execute those two commands in a book if you want. You can do like echo Raphael and you can do uh, and you do end and do you do echo Lima and it's going to execute those two commands. You can also do a semicolon if you'd like. So that's a way for you to execute two commands in, in, in one go. So cool. Now we need to create the actual a menu uh, usability here. So the, yeah, not the menu, like the, the actual code. So the first thing that we need to do, let me uh, do this. So we're going to uh, log choice. Uh, sorry, we need to have the choice. So we're going to do choice and this is going to be whatever the user passed and choice given. And this is the choice not case choice and now we are going to do if choice is libs then we're going to install libraries l if l if which is uh else l uh, if else in shell if else you pass on softwares then we're going to install softwares if you pass anything else we're going to give you a warning and you're going to say, uh, please give a valid option. I'm not going to exit here. There is no need. Uh, there is nothing else after this, right? So cool. Um, what else? Uh, let me think. Okay, cool. So now we need uh, the functions, right? So let me create the function, function install libraries, right? And the function install libraries, we're going to start giving a log saying installing, like a, a, a message to the user, all libraries necessary to run all QA ops projects. Great. Then you, you, we need to have the file, right? So where are these files, right? So I'm going to create uh, the file called um, repos. Uh, let me repos libraries. And another file called um, repos software. The library is going to be like Gradle, Java, uh, what else? Um, Bash. 
and the software is going to be Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ Idea Community Edition, which is the free edition that I'm using. Great. Now I need to tell the script where are those uh, files. So I'm going to create a variable called libraries. And we have a resource folder, resource, resources, dir, which is a variable with the resources folder, then slash dependencies, slash repos, libraries. Now I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to do software. And this is also software. Great. Cool. Now I have the variables. Now what I need to do is I need to get this file and be able to read it. Right. So there is a command called IFS, which is uh, short for internal field separator. So this is the explode in shell. Right. So like if I have my name, Rafael Lima, in any language, I can explode this string uh, by the empty space and transform this into an array where this is going to be in the position zero and this is in the position one. I can do the same thing with IFS. But in this case, I want to explode by lines. So what I do, I pass uh, backslash uh, backslash n for breaking line so it's going to explode into uh, uh, it's going to explode each line and now I need to read those lines so I pass read and I pass what is the uh, delimiter so I want I, I'm going to pass this because I wanted to read the whole thing like the whole line then I pass dash R so it's going to not try to interpret things like slashes, forward slashes. Uh, it's going to actually literally read those. Dash A, because I want all of this content to become an array. And I need to tell the name of that array. So the name of that array is going to be libraries. And now I need to tell what is the file that holds the, that content. In this case, it's repos library. However, I need to push, uh, I need to put a, a smaller than sign uh, because in my interpretation, I'm sending these to, I'm sending these on the right to the place on the left. Cool. Now I can do echo libraries and add sign because this is an array. So I need, I want everything. So if I do E, uh, BB, Ripples uh, install libs something broke because in dependencies it did not find the resources dependencies repos libraries repos libraries I might have a typo here 72 there you go repos Resources D, dependencies, repos libraries. Oh, okay. So I did not put here on the dependencies folder. So I need to create a dependencies folder. Directory dependencies. All right. And I'm going to move these two inside here. There you go. So now I can execute it and voila. So I have now an array of the content that I would like to have. Right, so let's play a little with the IFS command. So if I if I like the, this delimiter, so I can change this to read the D, right? The delimiter to be the D. So as soon as it, it gets to the D, it's going to stop it. Right? And it's not going to read the rest. The same thing with A, for instance. Right, it is just found it, stopped it. So I want the whole line. And here I can say, let's say, I want to break into the S. Like, so this is going to explode into the S. So you can see 
it's only, only exploded uh, uh, the leaves. So let's change to A because we have more A's. Again, see it exploded differently. I want to explode in the break line. Cool. Now I need to for loop through it. So I need to call it for libs in library, which is the uh, variable that we gave the name libraries. And now I'm going to brew install libs. Oh, and since I'm looping through an array, I need to pass the add, time, add sign. Otherwise, this is going to loop only to the first one. All right, so let's try it out. So install libs is going to install. Let me come back here in a second. So we can move forward with this while it's executing. So I'm duplicating this and I'm going to install software. These become software and software software. And this is SWs. And this is repos software. See, it tried to install Gradle, uh, Java, uh, Bash. So amazing. And I don't even I don't even need to validate if uh, if the that library already exists because the brew is going to do that for me. Like if you are using Linux, you need to learn uh, what, what is the, your Linux packet, package manager. So Ubuntu is going to use apt-get, for instance. And now let's try the software. So the software is going to do the same, but now it's going to try to install IntelliJ and Visual Studio Code and see already exists and IntelliJ as well. Cool. So now what I don't like about this code is we are duplicating, right? The difference between these two is pretty much the file. Pretty much now it is the file. So let's change a little bit. So let me use this one. I'm going to uh, receive the file as a variable, right? So we can say file to install one, right? And it's complaining here because nobody's sending the file. So like I see, nobody's sending the file. It's fine. Now we're not installing libraries anymore. We are installing, uh, it's more dynamic. So installing all content in, and then we pass the file to install. So this is what we're installing. Now uh, this becomes file to install also. And here I'm going to call it contents and here I'm going to call a line so it becomes for line in contents install line I can remove this I don't need this anymore and now I need to pass this so this is going to be I'm going to call it this I'm going to refactor brew install because I'm installing with brew. If you are using another one, you need to, uh, you would have a different function and you could validate. Like if you are using OS X, uh, OS X, you can uh, use brew. Otherwise you call this function. Otherwise you, you, can, you can do that, right? And uh, in Windows, you have like chocolatey, I guess, chocolatey for that as well. Um, you can also use a subsystem uh, Linux inside Windows and you can use whatever packet manager in the Linux that installed. All right, and now I need to pass here the, the file, right? So the file is repos libraries and I'm going to duplicate here and going to become repos software. And that's it. Now you remove the warning and if I try again, this is software. And now it's saying install, installing all content here. And libs is saying install all content in another, from another file. So that's it. And we have a, a, a fully working function that is doing an amazing, amazing, amazing job. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you like, I give the thumbs up. Um, it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. 
If uh, you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to see the notifications of my next videos. And I'm going to see you on my next video.